Hey folks, so in this part of the training, we are hoping to talk about the ABA membership and membership module to help you as leaders and committee chairs and members navigate uh, everything that is ABA membership. So within our leadership guidebook, I am going to scroll down to the membership and ABA membership sec benefits section and just walk you through a couple of things that you may, may very well have uh, already, you may have been to these pages, you may know everything about this, but there are a couple of uh, tips and tricks that I wanted to make sure everybody knows. And let's just make sure that you take advantage of everything that the ABA has to offer you and that you can talk to committee members and other members about these benefits and, and help them out. So I'm gonna start with my ABA. So that when you log into myaba.org, you will have access to your ABA dashboard. And you right now are looking at my ABA dashboard. If you look up here, you will say, see, hi, Gina Brown. So I have already logged in. And it's really key that you, you have to log in to the ABA website to take advantage of ABA benefits and access your membership information. And you know, that's just the way things work these days, we all have to have a login and a password. So you will see here on ABA dashboard, it shows me my different memberships. So here it indicates that I am a member of the dispute resolution section. I also have taken advantage of within the new ABA member model. Uh, it is free for all members to join the law practice division or the solo small firm and general practice division. So I've joined those entities at, as well. And then within those entities, you can join different committees and such. And that's what this is shown down here is what other committees that I am a member of. And as a staff with the ABA section of dispute resolution, I try to be a member of as many committees and sub entities of the section of dispute resolution as possible. Also here within the My ABA profile, you can see I'm in the memberships tab right now. I can also go over to the order history and that will tell me uh, programs, any, basically anything that I have bought from the ABA in recent history. And yes, it sometimes takes a little bit for the site to come up with what I have registered for recently. And you know, one of the reasons I often send members to this site, if for instance, they think that uh, an assistant or a staffer with their organization has maybe registered them for the spring conference, but they haven't seen a confirmation as of yet, you can come here and check your order history um, or for any, any other reason. So that's fairly helpful. Um, and then in this uh, kind of <laughs> opaquely labeled tab more, there is actually a lot of really good stuff that you want to be checking out. Uh, you can look at your entire ABA profile. So this is information that you have at some point uh, entered into the ABA system and it will list things like address and contact information. Your email this does not list my password here so you can't see it. You can have your education and bar. Uh, memberships, demographics, biography, and then I just lost my page. Um, and I recommend that members make this profile as robust as possible. Um, as I understand that the demographic information is not publicly available, but information like your biography is publicly available. And so, you know, occasionally someone might be looking for a, a lawyer of a particular practice area in Minneapolis, Minnesota within the ABA membership database. So it is just helpful to have as much information in there as possible so that other ABA members can find you. And I'll talk a little bit more about the member directory as well here in a minute. Um, the other thing I want to point out to you here is your communication settings. And these are very important. And the ABA has made it possible for you as a member to control how much and what type of email in particular you get from the ABA. So you have these options here under ABA email preferences. You can click the first button, which says stay informed with all ABA communications. And when you click this, you will get a lot of ABA communications. Uh, you will receive a lot of news, a lot of marketing emails, discounts. And if you, if you want that flow of information and you can tolerate it, that's great. Click that. A lot of our members cannot. 
Uh, they want a little bit less, a little more control over what they get from the ABA. And in that case, I suggest the profile that I have here, which is that I've clicked on customize my ABA communications. And with this button, it means that I get emails from the sections and entities within the ABA that I am a member of, and I don't get broader, larger ABA marketing emails. Uh, and so you can also view your groups here so that you can you know, identify that you'll be getting emails from two sections or 12 sections and have an idea of what will be coming for you. You also can unsubscribe from ABA communications. I I highly recommend folks do not do this because that will mean that you will not be getting communications that you should be getting as a member. So for instance, if you unsubscribe this, you won't be getting the weekly emails that the section sends out about you know, news within the dispute resolution community events that are coming up that might be of your interest, uh, committee activities and committee content. So, you know, uh, only if you're really, really grumpy about the ABA communications that you're getting at the moment should you unsubscribe from this. But also, you know, put, put a note <laughs> for a month later to, uh, to maybe rethink that if you're then, you know, not thinking you're getting any communication from this association that you've signed up to be a part of. And is that the, the right uh, option for your membership? The other part here is subscriptions. And I would also recommend you scroll down and pay attention to this. A number of these are uh, you know, ABA communication. So as a staff member, I'm automatically signed up for a digital distribution of the ABA journal. Um, I did wanna talk particularly about our section of dispute resolution communications. So dispute resolution magazine these days is mailed out to all uh, associate and lawyer members or, or legal professional members who are based in the United States. So by default, if you are a, uh, a lawyer or legal professional member of the ABA with a US address, you should be receiving a print issue of the magazine. Now you can say no. I you know I'm really happy with the digital issue. I don't want print. You can come here and you can click off and that is fine. Uh, you also can say if you don't want the digital option at all, you can say off. I recommend for these, for those of you who are in the US, if you like a print issue, um, keep the print issue on and make sure you also have the digital on. So you're getting the distribution of the magazine that way as well. Um, the other dispute resolution periodical is our Just Resolutions newsletter. And that is a default digital uh, monthly newsletter that uh, comes out. And your options here are simply on and off. And I highly recommend on. So you at least have that newsletter landing in your inbox uh, just about every month of the year. Right, that is my quick overview of my ABA. I highly recommend if you haven't visited your own my ABA profile, you spend five minutes taking a look at it. And as we've said in other places, if you have particular issues with your profile, the best place to start is the ABA Service Center because they have access to all of the background information in the database on your profile. Our dispute resolution section staffers can see some of that information, but not all of it. So we're happy to help you and talk you through, um, but we may in fact end up sending you to the ABA Member uh, Service Center because they can do much more than we can do. So then also here within your member and membership benefits, I just wanted to point you to the section's membership page, which we have linked in here. And you know, just so you're aware of this and know of the links that are to this page, we have a, a nice little validation of the value of section membership here, which we encourage you to just take a glance at. If you're talking with someone who's trying to figure out how they join or how they uh, you know, rejoin or confirm their membership, the, the join now button is the place to go. And that is tied in you know, specifically to each person's membership um, profile. So also you can come down here and get a link to our periodicals and publications. We have an ombuds group rate right, that we talk about a little bit here. It will link to other areas. And then I in particular wanted to 
point out that we've got a couple of um, directories that have been developed by section committees trying to you know, bring focus to different neutrals and different areas of practice. And we also have the dispute resolution roster list. And we are in the process of working toward updating the minorities in dispute resolution directory, as well as the women in dispute resolution directory that is managed by our women in dispute resolution committee. All right. So let's also then, it's a good thing to talk a little bit about our many section committees. And so you can come to the section of dispute resolution committees and task forces page here. And this is a nice place to be able to always find the ABA Connect uh, links. And we talk in more detail about ABA Connect in a different module, but here's one way to get to it. And also you can click the drop down here and see the access to different committee and task forces. And most of these links will take you to that particular committee or task forces connect page. And folks who are not members can usually view the, the landing page of that, but not be able to get to too much detailed information within those connect pages because most, most ABA connect communities are you know, limited for robust discussion and access to committee members. All right, so let's also take a look at um, I wanted to talk a little bit about premium content because this is another change within the uh, ABA's new membership model is that they are really working hard to develop this concept of premium content where folks who are ABA members and members of particular activities and sections and entities are, are the ones who have access to the, the high quality content that is put together by that committee or that entity. So for instance, Dispute Resolution Magazine, which is our, our flagship print magazine that comes out three times a year, uh, anyone can get access to the landing page of the magazine. And anyone can also take a glance at the, the specific, uh, I, I call it the digital table of contents for any particular issue. So any of the member, member, any member of the public can come and take a look at this page and see the great articles and headlines and the authors that were on the most recent uh, issue of the magazine. But forgive me, get my scroll to work a little bit better here. Uh, if, for instance, to click on a particular article, now I am now logged in, so I can see the entire content of this article, uh, but if I weren't logged in, I would get a, a, a little notice that would say this content is, you know, is premium content for members of the section of dispute resolution, you know, log in for access. And if you're a member, you log in, and then you will get this. If you're not a member, you have a couple of other prompts. Uh, and one thing I just wanted to point out while we are on this page is that um, you know, we try to post the articles both as uh, HTML pages so that they're really easy to sc scroll if you're reading on a computer as I am or on your phone. Um, we also have posted individual PDFs of the articles that as members that you can access. So we try to make this as user friendly as possible and get as many members as we can access to this content. Uh, and Just Resolutions eNews is uh, somewhat similar in that I'm looking, I've pulled up here the February issue of Just Resolutions e-newsletter. And again, this is our digital monthly newsletter. And most months, the content and the articles in the newsletter are provided by committees. And this issue, uh, the content was provided by the Young Professionals uh, Committee. And here on this page, we post quick summaries and links to the articles. But if you were to click on the article themselves, similar to the magazine article, I'm logged in, I have access. Uh, if you're not logged in, you're going to get a little notice that you do need to log in to get that information. So we want you all to be avail aware of that, both to be able to easily get to the content that you should be able to get as section members, and also to understand that if some members of the public are, are unhappy 
that they can't get to the article that it's it's membership premium content within the new ABA member model. All right, I wanted to just quickly go over a couple of things. Also, as members, you have access to some fairly significant discounts on ABA publications. I wanted to see if I can just, uh, you can access all of our publications on shopaba.org, and we have a very robust list of um, books that the section of dispute resolution has published in the last 25 years. I think we've had a, a publishing program for a good 25 years. I thought I'd pull up the ad for our books that we put in the most recent issue of the magazine because this is in many ways the easiest way to see the, uh, a snapshot of a number of the recent books that we've done, the most recent one being Negotiation Essentials for Lawyers. Um, and you as members get a, a, always have a member entity you know, section of dispute resolution discount on books that the ABA section of dispute resolution publishes. And then you can always go to shopaba.org and take a look at all of the dispute resolution books that are there or uh, called the ABA Service Center and they will also uh, help talk you through access to books. And I wanted to look at, so you get discounts on uh, events, so like the Spring Conference, CLE webinars that we do, there are member discounts and you can always come to our events and CLE page and see what is coming up in terms of live events and what we have recorded in the past and are on demand events, webinars primarily that you can access. And then very finally, what I wanted to make sure our members and leaders are aware of are, is our resources page. And on this resources page, if you have not scanned the section of dispute resolution resources page, you really need to, because this is, I think, a fairly amazing collection of really helpful you know, documents, reports, um, CLE modules, videos um, that it, leaders, members, and committees have put together in the past to try to you know, fill an educational need, a, a, a need of professionals out there for um, you know, different helpful stuff, I would say. And in particular, one item that I'm going to scroll down to here is that, where have I found, where am I, oh, these guides that are down here. We have a, a guide on planned early dispute resolution and a general mediation guide and a complex mediation guide and an arbitration, medi arbitration guide. These are all, let me click one, uh, these are downloadable PDFs that you can either link to or access and uh, use for, for clients, for yourself, uh, for anything. So just uh, take a look at this resources page and you can always come back here into the leadership guidebook and follow any of these links to get to any of this information. So thanks for listening to this. Bye-bye.